it's install day. We've got big boxes, old house. This is the house that uh, belongs to my parents behind our property in Atlanta. And we've been kind of working on this for a couple of years. There's an entire playlist about what we've been doing to this house, including encapsulating the crawl space, building an addition, uh, all kinds of different things. So please do check that out uh, if you want to get more backstory on this house. But at this point, what we're about to do is really max out the HVAC system because, of course, in an older home, it may be really difficult to get at the first system that we're always looking at, which is the enclosure, the air tightness and insulation layer. You're kind of limited. So you can also use the other system, which is the HVAC, to try and tune the performance of a home. Brent Ridley. H&M Services. Brent brought Mario and Ugo uh, to install the system behind us, and so they're hard at work with that. He installed the system in our house. We have a huge long video about that install. Here's the question. You're coming into somebody's house and they say, hey, I think I might want to do a heat pump. This family happens to have a professional consultant in this realm, but like, what would you, how would you coach normal people? Well, the first thing I would ask them is, you know, What's your, what's your indoor temperature? What do you like to keep it on? I find that while some people, they want to keep it at a higher temperature, they may not be your best bet for a heat pump because you do get a little bit of that cool breeze sometimes with the heat pump application. But if I can get them away from that a little bit, I start talking them into getting that flame out of that house because that's a big thing to me is you get flame, you get carbon monoxide, you get byproducts, all that good stuff. Let's get it out. And, and, and some people are hard to get away from. Get them into that mindset of the heat pump will keep up because a lot of people, also have a misconception that heat pumps won't keep up in our environment. And of course, absolutely they will. Um, they've gone a long way with the technology and Mitsubishi's done a huge thing with their technology. They can get down into the negative temperatures and still keep full capacity operation and things like that. So most people live uncomfortably on their house and don't know it because mm. they're trying to overcome it with you know, trying to turn the temperature down to overcome the humidity problems or things like that. So you have all kind of issues like that. And once you start to educate folks, hey, you're living uncomfortably and you're just bypassing that by turning the temperature down or doing whatever, let's let's remedy the problem rather than you trying to fix it, you know, kind of halfway. Cool. So this is a mild day right now. It's going to be 70 degrees by lunchtime. Um, if we were in the middle of winter, it would be very important that this be a one day process. Is this always a one day process for your crew? Taking a, a furnace AC coil combo and swapping it out with a heat pump? Yeah, um, yeah. most of the time we can do it in one day. Okay. Mario's awesome. Uh, Mario really kicks butt. He's fast, he's, he's efficient, and he's good at what he does. So we try our very, very best to do it in one day. Now, of course, there's applications when you do a lot of things that you can't get it done in that one day. But most of the time it's a one day thing. We can at least get the heat going and then come back and maybe tie up some duct work and some things like that later on. It's never been sealed. And I wish we were replacing these, because, you know, yeah, right. but I'm gonna make the world if I'm in. That's great. I mean, it's metal. At least it's not flex or duckboard. Look at that thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Homemade scoop. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I cut it here because <laughs> before it was sticking and all. It the was. <laughs> and all these, I trim all these. Before it was like this. Do you see? This? Just shove it in there, everybody. Mm -hmm. Jeez, Louise. We're gonna seal everything. Rock it on. Thanks, man. And then plus we're gonna wrap it with bubble wrap. We don't use uh, insulation. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, I brought I brought some fiberglass if you wanted to, but yeah, if you've no, got bubble, bubble wrap. wrap is better. When you're doing an HVAC replacement with a water heater involved, you want to also be aware that you may be what's called orphaning the water heater. But since this unit was a high efficiency, this furnace, we're actually not worried about the orphaning because it already happened. Uh, you can see over here, this water heater is now the only thing that is warming up the entire chimney. We know it's not a problem because we already tested for it. One of the most important things about swapping out this furnace AC combo with a single heat pump to me is what we're doing to the duct system. So the duct work was not designed. Short answer. The issues that we're having as far as comfort goes in the house are probably at least partly due to the performance of the duct work. So we will be testing the static pressure on this system. What we had before was a total external static pressure over here for this system of 0.9. That's nine tenths of an inch of water column. That is a lot. It's too much. What we had in there was a coil. It's a bunch of fins. You've seen this before. This is in the way of the airflow. The blower is at the bottom of this cabinet. This right here is a furnace's primary heat exchanger. This is where it gets mostly hot. On a high performance piece of furnace equipment, you're gonna have PVC pipes coming out of the top of it. That's because they're able to steal even more heat from it 
by going in there and putting a secondary heat exchanger inside of it. So now we've got one, two, three things in the flow of the air. That's already giving the system a hard time. Then we plug it into a duct system that's probably a little bit small for what it's trying to do, and we're gonna have problems. Instead of taking these three things, we're gonna put one thing, which is this coil cabinet right here on this Mitsubishi. This is a PV series heat pump. This is kind of their top of the line ducted uh, air handler. So one coil in the way instead of three. We do have this guy right here. This is called heat strips. It's a backup heating mechanism. The signature for this house is that it's got a cooling load of about 30 kilobtus per hour, which is two and a half tons of air conditioning. So we need a two and a half ton air conditioner. But the heating that we need on this house, because it gets down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit in this climate, that's our design temperature, we need about 60 kilobtus. So the heating that we need is about twice as big as the cooling. And that's not something that you're gonna see in a higher performance home. My home, just up the, the street, doesn't have backup heat strips at all because the heating need and the cooling need are a lot closer because we've done a lot of stuff with insulation and air tightness. So these, this is a 10 kilowatt heater and it will turn on, hopefully just as supplemental, we're gonna get Brent to tell us whether we can uh, make that happen or not. At some point it will turn on and the uh, heat pump portion of this uh, starts to not work as well. And I believe that that can be staged. And again, we're gonna have Mitsubishi's technical uh, team weigh in on that. This doesn't reintroduce a lot of resistance into the flow. You can see it's just a couple wires. So I'm hopeful that when we put this in, we're gonna reduce the overall uh, system back pressure. We won't be able to see a lot more of a static pressure that we like, especially because the filter that we're putting in is a lot better. Just to review, for those of you who are at a super high nerd level, the difference between a furnace air conditioner system and a heat pump system is a heat pump system moves heat around. A furnace is gonna burn something and it's a lot more kind of abrupt. Obviously, you know, the more we burn things, they're not replaceable, right? So you keep burning them, we're gonna run out. And I mean, obviously there's gonna be future generations. So we wanna make sure they have the same access Maybe, to- Maybe, if they're lucky. <laughs> yeah. You guys, this is my friend, Ryan Burrell. Ryan's the technical side at Mitsubishi and he's here in Atlanta, which is very handy for me. So you <laughs> helped me to size and select the equipment at our house. And then you helped teach me how to use Diamond System Builder which is your software at Mitsubishi for like actually selecting this equipment. Yeah. Tell us why the software is important. Well, one is uh, you really want to get a good estimate of what your actual BTU um, delivery or BTU removal will be. A lot of the factors that go into what our, how our systems perform will be, you know, line set links, you know, bends in the line sets, uh, you know, what the actual climate data is, and also just what your actual not just design temps, but your set points. And you want to understand what you're going to actually try to achieve with the system and what your actual load is on a home. So here is the software that Mitsubishi has to size their particular equipment. It's called Diamond System Builder. We've got our uh, units and our brands that we're choosing. You can obviously choose other brands that Mitsubishi has partnered with. The date, et cetera, et cetera, all this boring stuff. Um, units, obviously we're using Imperial. We're in the United States of America. We're not using metric. But then design conditions, this is very important. So you can choose based on location, or you could manually put in your particular outdoor conditions, your indoor conditions that you're shooting for. And then if you want, there's also water stuff. This is mostly, I think, for commercial. So now I can choose to add a centralized system. I've got one here that's a two and a half ton PV, and then a three ton SV, that's the, called the P series and the S series. Then basically you choose an indoor unit to match with that. And in that case, I used a multi-position ducted air handler. You're gonna have to put in the piping length of the line set and how many 90 degree bends it takes once it's outside of the, the compressor. Uh, and then also the height of this unit compared to the outdoor unit. So if they're on the same plane, you just put both at zero. Then you can also choose the accessories. So I chose the 10 kilowatt electric heat kit because we were at 30,000 BTUs of uh, heating cooling on the heat pump and then we needed to get to 65 according to Manual J. These systems, we tested this and I'm linking to a video right now if I still have room to do this in this video, uh, <laughs> where we actually tested the air tightness of the equipment itself and it was like, it even surprised me. Code is assuming 
that the leakage of the actual equipment is 25% of all the leakage in the entire duct <laughs> yeah. system. Did you know that? Yeah. <laughs> um, that's a nightmare. If you imagine like all the leakage in the system, a quarter of it is in this box that's this big. So if you're gonna try and seal a duct system, attack the equipment first. But why do you guys spend so much time and effort trying to actually make the box tight? Because like, you don't have to clearly. Yeah. Hardly, hardly <laughs> anybody else takes it as seriously as you guys do. Well, but you have to, you give, you put more um, reliance and dependence on the contractor to basically seal up the air handler. And I mean, that's a lot of red letter tape and red letter tape is not the cheapest these days, but we don't have to worry about that variable of airflow um, with our ductless products because, you know, whether you set it at high, medium or low, like, you know, it's going to per like perform and output the CFM and from our submittal. So when you start incorporating that with duct, duct work, you know, or a duct, our ducted air handler, like that limits and kind of minimizes like that variance because we at least can address 25% of what potentially could be mm. your loss. So, and then noise wise, and I, I kind of want to know how you do this, but I, ha when I'm in my crawl space, I have to touch it to know if it's running. That's right. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we used to live in this apartment where like it would be so loud across the room that we'd have to turn up the TV to be able to hear it again. That's you no, know I, mean? I know exactly what you're talking about. Like, tight cabinet, and then also having your metering device at the outdoor unit. A lot of those factors um, really go into play from the product development side. And so like those are just things that they're considering from the front end. I think a good point to bring up for a lot of you out there is auto versus keeping the, the fan speed set to high with these systems. Auto has one benefit of that the indoor fan is going to be in a complete variable speed fan. Um, it's going to work in conjunction with the inverter compressor. However, if it's only 60% part load conditions, it's not going to be running full blast, not getting enough you know, air and throw at the, at the discharge of a supply register. So with that being said, we, we typically suggest keeping these on high fan speed and adjusting the static pressure based on what your total external static pressure measurements are um, at the commissioning of the install. Now, H&M Services is a diamond contractor. What exactly does that mean? So a diamond contractor means we are certified by Mitsubishi to install their products. We know the nuances, we know the ins and outs, we know how to do our load calculations correctly. Measuring uh, airflow, things like that, with that Mitsubishi system, we get taught all those things. Biggest thing for me is now we can offer the homeowner a 12-year parts warranty instead of a 10-year parts warranty. From the day of installation, not from the day you bought it. Yep. So it can sit in, your, sit in your garage for six months or whatever, and then we can put it in for you. One last point that I want to make with Ryan here is that uh, a lot of times HVAC contractors have gotten s some bad experiences by running the air handler nonstop 24-7 because when the AC turns off and it stops drying out the air, the air still goes by and it will now re-evaporate all that air or all that water that was on the coil into the air. And so you get then a rehumidification of the house. And that is also why paired with a dehumidifier, we can use such a beautiful air handler that doesn't make any sound at all to circulate the air through a filter and then also not worry about the dehumidification process. And we'll make a video explicitly about that on our house so that you can see how flat the dehumidified uh, air ends, ends up being. But I think that we, that idea of running 24 seven, I'm like totally into. I almost coach all my clients to do that. Honestly, I, I would prefer that because that's how our system is manufactured and produced and designed. Um, I think we know the on and off is what really like hurts mechanical equipment, but I, I think from the standpoint, if you're not going to, there, there are options. So like that is a significant point that you brought up with the you know, introducing moisture back into the home. Um, but we do have options with certain controllers that some of our thermostats allow you to turn the fan off after set points met. And that's again why you just call tech support when you have questions, because like I've been doing this for 15 years and I know almost nothing about a lot of this stuff. Yeah. Okay, so quick update. A few weeks after we installed this system, we were given an amazing opportunity, uh, which is a few days of very, very cold weather. And not just any cold weather, but the particular temperature that we actually put into the manual J which is called the design temperature. This is the 99% coldest that it gets historically in a certain location. So it was 20 degrees all day long and all night long for three days. And because I'm curious, I wanted to find out what the heat pump by itself could do. Because of course those heat strips are there because the calculation told me that they need to be there. 
and um, my parents are not there, which is kind of like amazing. So we get to see the house at static state with no doors opening and closing and nobody touching the thermostat, no setbacks or anything. I had the thermostat locked in at 70 degrees. Put one of these hobo data loggers in. These are very handy because you get a graph of minute by minute or every five minute or 10 minute, whatever increment you want. The 30, 1000 BTU per hour heat pump by itself kept the house at 70 degrees all by itself at the coldest temperature that we designed for in Manual J. So this led us to two possible conclusions. I think it's probably a little bit of both. Uh, both Mitsubishi is conservatively rating their equipment at the colder temperatures and also um, Manual J is very much oversizing this. And we talked about this in the AHR uh, tour. If you haven't seen that video, I'm linking it on screen now. Um, I talked with Mitsubishi. I talked with my HVAC trainer, Alex Meany. And so th that is one thing that you should just know is that the heat pump performance in very cold weather is probably way better for those two reasons that we're oversizing like by <laughs> kind of a lot in the software and also that there is a conservative rating. Now there's something that you should know in the rating, there is, uh, if you look at the submittal sheet, there's a thing called rated capacity and max capacity. AHRI requires that everybody uh, keep their, their uh, inverter locked. So when they say rated capacity, that actually doesn't mean anything. In a variable speed piece of equipment, you can completely ignore that number because it is meaningless. It's only there because AHRI is trying to give some um, pat on the back to people who are producing single speed pieces of equipment, which is fine, do it. But don't say that the thing can only put out, uh, you know, a certain amount of BTUs when really it can do a lot more than that. So there's just my little gripe about that. You're gonna see a lot more about the extra bells and whistles that we're putting onto this system uh, in another video. Uh, but I hope that you've enjoyed this install video. This is kind of like a wide ranging topic. And so of course, we're gonna keep on talking about this on the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Comment below if you have other things to add about installing Mitsubishi or any other brand and the kind of like ins and outs and pitfalls that you might see. Tune in next time.